So having a few sawhorses in your workshop is super convenient. You can use them as temporary work surfaces, when you're building large things, or when you're breaking down full sheets of plywood. Now these IKEA ones have been working out okay so far, but I'm sick and tired of how much space they take up, and they don't stack at all. Like literally the best thing you can do is kind of like twist them together like this. So, today we're gonna be building a couple of these sawhorses. They're quite easy to build, they're super sturdy, but more importantly, they fall down super flat. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Let's get started building. Okay, that will luckily be the last time I'm using those sawhorses. After this project, I'll use my own. So we can build an entire sawhorse using just this 18 mil sheet of plywood. And I can actually build three complete sawhorses out of just this one sheet. And if you want to build them as well, I'll have complete drawings and assembly guides for you to download and I'll have a link to that in the description below. I'm gonna build mine out of 18 mil pine plywood and that's what the drawings are for. But I'll also have drawings for three quarters of an inch plywood. That's 19 mil. Okay, let's get started building. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a really popular turn-based dark fantasy role-playing game. It's free to play and it's available right now to play on both PC as well as cross-device on your Android and iPhone. You can open what is called shards in this game, and doing so will get you new champions. Just like this one, called Gator, which is a support champion, or this one, called Judicator, he's an attack champion. And the thing is, in this game, no matter if you get a good or a bad champion from opening these shards, they will still be useful. You can choose to either level them up or sacrifice them to level up other champions. And by clicking in the link in the description below, every new player will get an exclusive welcoming package containing 100,000 silver, 2 clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, and the free awesome champion Adjudicator. But make sure you're quick, as these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days. Thank you Raid for sponsoring this video. This is a much more manageable size. Now we can keep using the track saw and start cutting out my parts, but since I have a table saw, I'm gonna use it to speed up that process a little bit. And that was all the parts cut. Now some of these still need to be cut down to length or need some other feature cut into them. But this right here will make three entire sawhorses. Now most of what we still need to do on these parts is cut the angle at which this thing is going to be opened at. Which is in my case 17 degrees. So we're going to do that now and cut these leg pieces at 17 degrees at the bottom. Now we can do this using a track saw or a miter saw. I'm going to jump back on my table saw because it's easy to make repetitive cuts there. So the bottom angle on this board is now cut and you can now see the angle at which it's going to sit against the floor at. Now the majority of these parts are not hard to make. It's mostly just straight cuts or maybe an angle on one side like this. But there's two places on the sawhorse where I'll be using a hinge. And I want those hinges recessed into those boards. Just like I've done here. Now I've done this by setting the blade on the table saw at the right height and then just doing multiple passes until all this area here was cleared. 
But now onto the one kind of oddly shaped piece of this entire build. You see to get this top piece here to sit right on the inside of the legs and for it to lock in place like it does, we need to cut out a little bit of clearance on the inside there. And I'm gonna do that with this cutout template that I made. I'm just quite simply gonna cut out the one-to-one -one template from my drawings, transfer that over to my parts and then cut that out on the bandsaw. But you can definitely also use either the table saw or a combination of a miter saw and a hand saw for this. And that was all the leg pieces done. Now moving on to the last few pieces before we can start assembling these. So for the shelf and one of the cross braces, we need to make a recess for the hinge that we're gonna use. Luckily, there's no fancy angles in this one, so we're just gonna do the same thing as we did on the top of the legs. Set the table saw to the right height and then do multiple passes until we have the clearance that we need. And I've got an additional little quick tip for you to cut that angled front piece on the front of the shelf because it has an angle on both sides, it can be a little bit tricky to cut. So what I'm gonna do is that I've intentionally left this shelf too long, so I'm gonna start by cutting the angle on the front and then cut that front piece out of the shelf. And then I can cut the shelf to length afterwards. That way you don't have to push this awkwardly shaped piece through the table saw. So it's about time that we start assembling these parts into what is gonna become our sawhorse. And we're gonna start by assembling two frames made up of two legs each with a brace in between. And to give the legs some additional strength, I've cut these strips of plywood on the table saw and then cut some angles on both sides. They all have the same 17 degree angle on the bottom and then some variation of angles on the top. The top ones are purely cosmetical though, so it's not super important to get those right. I cut all of these on the miter saw and used the band saw for the steep one here, but you can definitely just use a hand saw if you want. So these will go on either side of the leg like this, and I'm gonna attach these using some glue, lining them up, and some brad nails. All right, that's one done. Same thing goes for the rest. That was the last leg. Now let's assemble these into a, <laughs> into a frame. So like I said, these legs go together like this with one of these cross braces in between. And instead of just gluing these together, I wanna add some additional strength. Now I'm gonna do that using some good old fashioned dowels. Now I don't have any fancy jigs or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is just place these at the right position that I've already marked up. Make a mark across both pieces. And then I'm gonna transfer those marks over onto the side of the board here and I'm gonna do that for both of the pieces. Then I'll mark the center of the boards, and now I'll literally just drill holes the same size as the dowel I'm gonna be using on those center marks. All right. All right, with a bit of glue and some clamping pressure, that's gonna be just fine. If they don't quite line up, you can always wiggle the drill a little bit to make them line up better. And this is how all the frames are gonna go together. No fancy jigs needed, just a little bit of precision. I couldn't find any longer clamps. So that is one frame complete and that's six frames complete on the shelf. So shelf, super easy. This is where the last few bits come together. We're gonna take this skewed piece that we cut off the front here earlier, apply some glue and glue this thing on flush with the front. <laughs> Note to self, even though you change the length of the brad nails, there will be one left in the chamber. And then this thing, which will make sure that the shelf is held in place, goes on in the back. And we're just gonna use one of these as a spacer piece. And now we'll attach the shelf to this frame piece. And to get it in the right position, I'm just gonna use these two scrap pieces on either side, in addition to two of the hinges that we'll be using in just a second, just the spacer pieces to account for a clearance. 
and I'll clap these two together just to make sure that the hinge ends up nice and tight. And the hinge that we'll be using is this piano hinge. These come in all sorts of lengths. I've just cut mine to size and they're called piano hinges because they're normally used on pianos. Go figure. And that will just slide in right there. And I'm just kind of seeing these holes to make everything nice and flush. And this seems to work really well. And since we clapped it together, it basically stops vertically. And now I can finally assemble these two main frames. If I've done everything right, this should go together fairly easily. So we'll start by attaching the hinge to one of the sides. So I've attached both the hinges flush up against the bottom edge here. I've also already countersunk all the holes because I knew that I was gonna use slightly bigger screws than what the hinges were intended for. So now the last step is to attach the hinges to the other side here and they will also go flush against this lip here. Now so I don't have to balance this whole thing, I'm gonna attach a scrap piece of wood to the back side here so that the frame is held in place upright. And now we can attach it. <laughs> All right, are you ready? <laughs> yes! Looks like everything fits. And... <laughs> and now on to the very last piece, which is this top section here. It's just a strip of wood that I've cut two notches out of on my bandsaw, and this thing will fit right in there. And I'll attach this to just one of the sides so that we can still fold it. One quick note on this top piece here. This entire sawhorse is constructed the way it is because I wanted to have this top piece replaceable. Because when I break down full sheets of plywood, which I often do on sawhorses, I end up cutting into this top piece. So after a while, this part gets really worn down and eaten up by the saw blade. And instead of having to replace the entire saw horse, I can just make a new top part, which is literally the easiest part to make on the entire thing. <laughs> and there we have it. These saw horses are basically finished. But you know what? I've got one last trick. You see, when you fold these up, they fold flat together, right? But right now, there's nothing stopping this shelf from falling out. And we're gonna fix this in a super easy way. I'm just gonna take the drill bit that's the same size as the dowels I've used, lay it flat on here, and then make a mark in between these two braces. So now I can unfold this thing again and drill two holes where we made the marks. And now with just a little bit of glue, I can insert half a dowel into this hole. And now I can open this up, fold it together, and this thing can't go anywhere. So I can pick it up and it will stay fully flat. <laughs> so I am really happy with these. And I really think that they turn out great. But there's just one last problem with them. And that is that I really don't like the look of this type of wood. So I might have painted a few of them pink. <laughs> oh, and I also made this cool little bracket to hang them on the wall. Come check it out. So I just made this simple little shell from the pieces that were left over from the full board that we made these parts out of. And just look how little space this takes up. This is so much better than the old sawhorses. And while we're talking about comparing sizes, let's do that. This is how much space four of these sawhorses take up. And this is how much space one of my old ones take up. I would say that that is quite a big difference, but let's compare them to some other ones. And here I've got three of these quite flimsy sawhorses. These are like the cheapest ones you can buy. And I would say that these are pretty compact. Now I only have three of these. And although they are quite thin, they're still thicker than the ones I made. And by far less sturdy. Talking about how sturdy these are, let's try. Okay, I've got to try and not hurt myself here. I think... Okay. I can stand on the shelf, no problem. Looks like I can stand on it just fine. And with that, I'm gonna call this project a success. I'm very happy with the result and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. 
as I said, if you want to make sources like this, I'll have complete plans available to download in the link below. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're not yet, please consider subscribing and make sure to ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. As for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. I'm definitely gonna go get rid of the old sawhorse now. <laughs>